Well, welcome back to Fly Fishing Podcast. I'm going to tie uh, another jig. Um, this time we're going to use some rubber legs on it to, to give it a bit, little bit more action in the water. I'm finding these uh, particularly effective patterns for things like growling, um, who seem to like to uh, take flies which are rising from the riverbed up and um, if you can get deep down there that's probably the best place for them. Now this is um, really a fly I came up with last year modelled on uh, some European European patterns both uh, French who have been fishing micro nymphs for some time and uh, are long leaders, and also Czech uh, patterns. These are um, multi purpose fly, really. I just tie those legs in as a tail. As we're going forward, I'm just going to nip those off, that'll make the next lot of legs. And the body is tied from just grey bottom. I'm just going to dub this on. I also add a, a little short grey tail in with the legs. So you can just put an extra a little bit of marabou or fluff in there as you're going forward. Uh, as a tail, just to give it a little bit more movement. Let's get these legs so at least pointing backwards. Doesn't matter if they're not all that neat. Um, spray them out a little. They have to be exactly the same. same angle. Right. I'm going to bring this forward as we're tying this, the rib, just a silver rib, it helps keep it all together a little bit. So bring that forward, like so, wrap it back. So this makes it easier if you do it in stages. And again, a couple more of these legs in there. Add a bit more movement. Got them in going backwards. going forwards as well. Cut those off. You always can resize these after you built everything up. I'm just going to go back in between and down. A bit more possum dubbing on there. Very nice fine dubbing possum. Um, it's got a few grade hairs in it. 
find a very good dipping for things like uh, build that up a bit. Okay. Yes, I find possibly to think for and lots of dry flies holds together well um, separate those legs out was that silver rib now you can have those legs going backwards or you can keep them going forwards the last pair Totally up to you. I'm going to move mine back. Build it around the bead. Keep it as secure as possible. Taking everything back quite a few stages there. I'm going to put in a CDC. Feather, which is going to be a hackle. Keep it as a very fine. set of legs at the front, tightened by the tip. There we go. Don't worry about your legs at the moment. Get that nice and secure. Don't pull it too tight. Now I'm going to use a mosaic black and red dubby. It's got a lot of shimmer to it. Just in front of the last pair of legs, behind the bead, take the thread forward. And as we're going forward with a CDC, comb and everything back. Producing a bit of a, a leggy hackle there. That will do. Go forward to secure that off. Put it all back. Wrap down. Let's create a wisp of hackle around the fly's head. Those legs that give it even more of an impression of movement. And then, just to finish with a little bit of that black and red mosaic dubbing again. Just dub that on. And it's just to finish off the top of the head there. And your silk will wrap down into it and become very neat when you. to it. Just try the whip finishing tool on that. There we go. Final whip finish. There we go. We could go a little jig which has got lots of movement. A bit of sparkle in it. Trying for catching trout, rainbows, going down deep, bouncing across the bottom of the river, but also that, that vertical movement up through the different planes of the water is very, very killing. Particularly if you, you're trying to imitate something like a sedge uh, coming out to hatch, um, that ascending nymph is a real trigger and um, something which will trigger particularly grailing entertaking this time of year. Tie a few up, 
pull it on, give it a fish, and come back to see me at the Folly Fishing Podcast. Tight lines. <laughs>